I hope this presentation will be helpful to give you more knowledge about the program, um, the global communication program. So, uh, so the overview that I have, um, the global communication program is one of the newer, newer graduate programs. It was launched in 2008 and is offered jointly by the Elliott School and GW's School of Media and Public Affairs. This program aims to provide you with the necessary knowledge and skills, tools to manage the challenges of a global information environment, dealing with complexities of different government structures, the security demands, business practices, and culturally different audiences. You will be applying communication skills to worldwide events once you're through with the program. We're looking at what, pandemics, economic crises, and the like. So that's just a glimpse into the adventures that lie ahead for you. Um, the Institute for Public Diplomacy and Global Communication, or IPDGC, supports the Global Communication Master's Program. Though small in size, IPDGC nevertheless whole, hosts a number of activities that contribute to the global communication graduate students' exposure and experiences while you're on your program. So you'll want to keep in touch with us throughout your graduate journey. Other than our director, Dr. Janet Steele, the Institute has a public diplomacy fellow, which is a position held by State Department Senior Foreign Service Officer. Our current fellow is Amelia Puma. And um, I'm Yvonne O, oh, and I'm the program coordinator for IPDGC. So looking at the curriculum for the Master of Arts in Global Communication, um, to earn this degree, you must successfully complete 40 credits of the program, which includes 15 credits in core courses, nine credits in either a global issue or regional field specialization. I can expand, explain that a little later. Um, a three credit skills course and nine credits of electives. You must also complete a four credit capstone project or enroll in the three credit alternative capstone option. Students have also the option to pursue a thesis. Uh, and, and that's just an overview of the program of study. So the core courses, to start with, let me give you advice that you'll probably hear from the Global Communication Academic Advisor, which is to take the first three classes on this list in your first semester. These courses are offered only in the fall semester. Um, also, the recommendation is to complete these core courses, Research Methods, International Affairs Cornerstone, media and foreign policy in this first year, as the second year is usually busier with the capstone project. And yes, the economic courses are a requirement for this program. As you know, economics is already a prerequisite for the program, and the expectation has always been that the global comm grad student has a good working knowledge of the subject. In addition, the prerequisite of a foreign language is also a requirement. You can also consider to, uh, taking more language skills classes as electives in order to gain more mastery of the language. Occasionally, the admissions office will let IPDGC know to reach out and offer suggestions of online courses or textbook readings to help improve knowledge in these areas. Um, the areas of specialization, also known as your concentration. Uh, the global issue specialization looks at deepening your understanding of contemporary issues, or you may want to build your expertise based on regional fields. You can find specific course listings for your chosen specialization in the GW Bulletin. Now, the skills courses and electives. Uh, if you're looking at skills courses, these are some samples that I've put up, and you would need to take a total of three credit hours. However, some students may 
be able to take four skills courses depending on the capstone project. And of course, all this is done in consultation with the academic advisor, director of program, and occasionally the capstone su supervisor as well. The stu uh, students can also consider electives that relate to international affairs or communications. And as I mentioned, you know, diving deeper into getting better language skills. So these are all things to consider once you're in the program and you know, the conversation can be carried on with the director and academic advisor. The program director would be your content expert, but the academic advisor helps you keep on track with the courses you need to complete your program. So as a Global Com graduate student, you will have that support throughout. Now your capstone options. Um, this will be the, the main focus for most of Elliott School's graduate students in the final year. The group you work with may not be with the GC cohort, but graduate students with different specializations who can contribute differently to your capstone project. Capstone teams conduct in-depth, real-time study of current global challenges, provide analysis of these policies that often involve field research trips to foreign countries, and then the team presents recommendations to some of the most prestigious institutions in Washington, D.C. You, you're looking at the clients which have included U.S. State Department, the Center for Strategic and International Studies, the World Bank Group, or other exceptional hybrid of public and nonprofit organizations that are based here. The other information that I'd like to share with you are the emails for academic and career guidance. So you can see your academic advisor is Elizabeth Lusk with the Graduate Student Services Office and Program Director Janet Steele, that's her email. Uh, I've had a lot of students write to me to ask about financial assistance and student employment opportunities. So the Graduate Admissions Office is very helpful with that as well as the two other offices of our student financial assistance and career services. You can copy this down, but I can also provide you um, the whole presentation on email after, this pres uh, after the presentation. So what else is there um, for the global communication graduate student? Well, currently we are in unusually challenging times, but you'll find GW a busy place to be at school and with plenty of opportunities to get involved. IPDGC's activities include an annual lecture. If you look to the top left of the screen, you'll see Dr. Joseph Nye, last year's keynote speaker. And if you've studied international or foreign relations, you'll know he is the person who coined the term soft power diplomacy. Um, IPDGC also has a blog that welcomes contributions. We call it our smart power blog. These are posts from students or invited guest writers on public diplomacy issues that are currently happening or being studied, or your experiences in the field. We welcome it all. Our podcast, Public Diplomacy Explained, or better known as PDX, are short interviews with public diplomacy experts and practitioners, again, powered by guest interviewers, which can be you, the Global Com graduate student. If this sounds like a recruitment ad, it slightly is. Also, our Public Diplomacy Fellow, Emilia Puma, is a great resource. She has spoken to many students about the opportunities available in working for the federal government. And being here in Washington, D.C., it's a city that has a strong sense of history. American politics and policies, influences on world affairs, nonprofits and other international organizations that also do their part in global engagement. It's a great city to be situated for this program. So do check out these links to activities. I apologize ahead for the IPDGC website. We've had a recent change in theme, which has made it a little bit messy, but the information is there. And again, if you have any questions, you can always write to me at IPDGC at gwu.edu. Um, I will be more than happy to send a copy of this presentation to you. 
And if you have any questions now, please do let me know. Um, and uh, I'll see if I can help you. So that's it. Oh, I see. Sorry. <laughs> um, Stephanie Maldonado, I'm hoping I said it correctly. What issues could I face if I can only take two of the three recommended core courses during my first semester? Well, um, Stephanie, if I'm not mistaken, I believe that one of the courses is held open for global comm students in the fall semester, but it's also available in, you're more in competition with the other students to enroll in the spring semester for that course. And that would be the SMPA course. Um, I'm sorry, I lost my notes for that point, but I think that's the the course that state uh, that is numbered SMPA um, 6210, Media and Foreign Policy. I believe that's the course that is offered both in the fall and spring semester, but in fall, they hold spaces open for global comm students. So I hope that answers your question. Um, from Catherine Sullivan, would it be possible to complete the global comm capstone in coordination with the gender policy program? I believe it is because you would be taking certain courses that um, you know, would the how how can I describe it? The programs that you would uh, the courses that you uh, take for the gender policy program, some of them do overlap with the global com program. So I do think you can, but I would also double check with your academic advisor to be absolutely certain. Um, one thing I know uh, is that our program director is very supportive. She, you know, hopes to see everyone once your once uh, school has started or, you know, speak to everyone and find out what you hope to achieve from your program in order to support you. And um, so, you know, if you can find coursework that will lead towards that, she is more than willing to, um, willing to support that, that um, uh, enrollment to that course. All right, from Erin Dienz. Dien, um, again, apologies if I'm mispronouncing some names. Uh, name of the podcast again is Public Diplomacy Explained, PDX. Um, if you go onto the IPDGC website, you'll see under our media drop down box the, the link that takes you to our podcast. Okay. Oh, thank you, Josh, for the explanation. And Yvonne, you also got a question on what uh, student opportunities are available with the IPDGC. Right. Do you offer student worker positions, research fellowship, fellowship assistantships, or internships? Oh, thank you. I had missed that. So um, currently, our student worker positions are more related to if we um, the, the small projects that we get. So they are mm, not necessarily the entire semester long or year long. Um, we had an upcoming program. Uh, in September, but we're looking to see if that's been postponed. And usually, um, like I said, our director is very supportive and we try to advertise it within the global congrat community before we open it up for others. So that's the only um, offering that we have right now. Uh, I hope that helps with your question. Um, is there any other question or have I
this this is a bad regime. And yes, they are. You know, I'm sure at the same time we're helping them. They're no. However, they're citizens. Can't be punished. So, Hello? Um, Josh, can you help me out? I'm I'm not sure if I'm getting audio from somewhere else or I'm missing. Yes, uh, for all uh, uh, individuals tuning in today, if you could please keep yourself on mute um, so we don't hear any background noise. Um, so sorry about that, Yvonne. Oh, it's okay. I was good. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Is uh, another question about... Yeah, from Catherine Sullivan. Yeah. Uh, I'll need to get back to you, Catherine. I am not very familiar with study abroad because um, I've, I, don't, I don't think there are any global com grad students whom, who has and in, in the period that I've been working for IPDGC. So let me get back to you with information on that. Um, is there a Facebook or LinkedIn group with admitted students? I'm not certain because there is a fa Facebook group for global comm students, um, the current and alumni, uh, but I'm not sure if there's one available for admitted students. Josh, would you know that? Yes, I'm going to jump in here real quick. Yes, please. Uh, so for any student who decides that the Elliott School is the institution that they would like to attend, once you pay your enrollment deposit, you'll have the ability to join our incoming class Facebook group. And in that, you would be able to connect with other incoming Elliott School students uh, that are coming this fall. Uh, so that is the way that you would be able to join our Facebook group is in if or when you decide to pay your enrollment deposit. Okay, um, any more questions? Again, as I said, you can always write to me at ipdgc at gwu.edu if a question comes up after this presentation, and I'll be more than happy to look for that information for you. Uh, what courses can I take during summer for the Global Comm program? I think you would be a little more limited, but I would advise you to look at the GW Bulletin because that will give you the more current courses that are available. I'm not so familiar as to what runs during the summer, uh, fall and spring semester, whether they also do have those similar courses during summer. Any other questions? Thank you, Nicole. Who controls the the presentation today? Um. Currently, it's between me and Josh Fulton. Sorry, um, is there a question there? Other than... uh, yeah, um, so once again, please everybody keep yourself muted uh, during Yvonne's presentation. Um, Yvonne, I don't see any other questions coming through. No. So we'll go ahead and just advise students tuning in that if they do have any other questions, uh, please yeah. feel free to email Yvonne at IPDGC at gwu.edu. Uh, that uh, specific email address is on the screen. Um, so please email Yvonne with any questions you have about the program, or you can also email us at the Graduate Admissions Office at esiagrad at gwu.edu, and we can either help answer your questions or 
guide you to Yvonne if it's more programmatic in nature. But Yvonne, thank you so much for tuning in today um, and providing this really helpful information about the Global Communication Program. Thank you so much, Josh, and thank you everyone for logging in. Um, I wish you well and have a good day. Bye-bye.